everyone, so today I wanted to talk to you about some beautiful book editions. So if you read classics, if you read books sort of popular from like the 18, early 1900s, I feel as though the publishing industry is constantly coming out with new editions of these books. I mean, partly this is because they're out of copyright, so they're quite cheap to print, um, and then that way you can sort of put more budget into hiring designers and coming up with interesting concepts. And a lot of people collect classics, so it's a fun one to sort of like introduce new editions to. And I do know people who like to collect, say, lots of different editions of Pride and Prejudice or lots of different editions of Alice in Wonderland, and it's a fun thing when publishers are constantly coming out with new designs that potentially have like new illustrations or things to offer. I myself do love to collect Sherlock Holmes books, although I don't necessarily have a ton of different editions of the same stories, a few, but not a ton. I'm more of a kind of book collector that likes <laughs> to have one edition of each classic, which means that I have um, a range of different beautiful editions but rarely have doubles of books. There's a couple I have doubles of, um, and I'll talk about why in this video, but mainly I like to have one edition of a book, um, but there are some sets that I think are so beautiful that I love owning the whole set, and I wanted to talk to you in this video about different classics editions that I own. So none of these are actually classical ancient literature. I did a whole video dedicated to my classical literature collection, which is every single piece of classical literature I own from antiquity, whereas these are all more modern, recent editions in terms of like um, comparison to antiquity. We have a lot of like 19th century literature, like I mentioned a little bit earlier as well and a little bit later, that I own in, in, in gorgeous editions and sort of my collection of beautiful editions of classics I feel like this video is. Um, um, I feel like the best way to express that is to start by showing you some books and you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. It'll be fun to talk about different editions. So for example I own four books in the Vintage Classics Edition Jane Austen series and this is one of the few series, um, collections that I own that I really want to complete that I haven't already completed. So I do own the two Jane Austen books that I don't own in these editions in different editions and I'll show you what editions I own them in. However, I love these editions so much that I would like to eventually have all six. It feels like it's less of a priority because I do own the books so if I want to read them like I do have them in, in different editions and for one reason or another I don't want to get rid of those editions but I would love to have this complete set because it is one of my favourite classics collections out there. First of all, I love the size and shape of these books. They are um, shorter than a regular paperback, so this is like your standard paperback height. Um, but they're not as small as like, say, a mass market paperback, and they're no less wide. In fact, they are slightly... Mm, they could be like a millimetre wider than a normal paperback, not substantially so. Um, but it gives them this lovely sort of like um, almost square look, they're not exactly squares but like I just think they look lovely in terms of the size and shape. They have French flaps which is when a paperback has little flaps like these on um, the paperback and then inside each there is a different print and this print will align with one of the prints on the other book. So this is um, Mansfield Park by Jane Austen and it has this print on the inside which is the same print that's on the front of um, Persuasion and then on the inside of Persuasion we have the same one as Mansfield Park. Um, we then have Emma which has this lovely print and then on the inside it has this print which is the same print that is on the front cover of uh, Northanger Abbey which on the inside has the Emma print and then if I were to have Pride and Prejudice and Sensibility they would do the same thing. And this collection was designed by Leanne Shapton. Like I said, these are my favourite Austin editions out there. There's something about them that's just so aesthetically pleasing to me. But even more importantly, they're an absolute pleasure to read. Classics in particular, you can get a whole range of layouts, whereas I feel like this is just so smooth to read. It's an absolute pleasure and I've had a lovely time with each of these in editions in the past when I have read them. And like I said, I really would like to complete the collection, even though I don't necessarily need the other two books because I do own them. I do think these are beautiful and um, I would love to complete it. So that is something like I do intend on doing because they are just stunning, right? Like these are just beautiful. And you can tell I love these editions um, and vintage classics sort of short 
from ranges of um, specific authors because I own some others. So I've actually stacked over here my Virginia Wolfs, which are in the same sort of shape and design as the Jane Austens. So I do know that Vintage do a few more collections in a similar vein, um, some which aren't specific authors but are um, sort of countries literature, so there's like a Russian literature collection. Um, but this is the only other one I own and it's the Virginia Woolf collection, which I do think I have the complete set of. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'll show you what I have if you know there's something else, but I think I've got them all. And and they're the same sort of shape and design with the French flaps as the Jane Austen editions um, but obviously these are all Virginia Woolf books and they are slightly different in that the inside flaps don't like correspond to a different uh, pattern but they do have beautiful inside flaps as well so for example this is To the Lighthouse which looks like this inside. And these are designed by Aino Maja Metsola. We then have the years, which looks like this on the front. I just think they're beautiful. They've got such like a watercolor esque vibe to them and they're, I don't know what it is, but I'm so drawn to these and I also think the art style kind of mirrors um, the sort of era that these books were written. We have um, The Waves by Virginia Woolf, which sort of has some waves on the inside there. We have Orlando, which looks like this on the outside and looks like this on the inside. We have Mrs. Dalloway, this has to be one of my favourites, all those bold colours, love it, which looks like this on the inside. And then lastly, we have the only non-fiction book in this range, which is A Room of One's Own, um, which looks like this and then this on the outside. I just think they're absolutely stunning and like, I can't really hold them up to show you in this respect, but like all next to each other, <gasps> beautiful. And then all stacked as I showed you before, also beautiful. And I do think Virginia Woolf um, is a really interesting writer, so I love that I own this complete set. Now, similar but not exactly the same is this range, which is the Puffin Sisterhood collection. So these are the same sort of shape and size as the books I've already shown you. Um, we have like the sort of like dumpy, format which I really really like but these are published by Puffin which is an imprint of Penguin Random House and if you're familiar with um, different sort of like um, imprints and publishing houses you'll probably know that Vintage is also owned by Penguin Random House which is probably why um, they have this similar design but these are stunning. If you look at the spines you'll see that they all line up with a print at the bottom and then a woman's face or a girl's face with the hair extending up the spine and I just think these are so gorgeous together like I could never get rid of one of these books because it would just I feel ruin the aesthetic of what is an absolutely beautiful work of art in itself and this is the edition in which I own Pride and Prejudice so um, let me show you Pride and Prejudice this is what the Pride and Prejudice in this editions look like and like I said I wouldn't want to get rid of this because then it would interfere with the beauty of this collection but I would still like to own it in the other edition which isn't something I usually do but in, in this instance I would like to and these are just so bright and bold and colorful and they have a focus on more sort of like teen young adult children's literature written by women with female protagonists which are considered classics although I think Pride and Prejudice is maybe a little bit older I guess they've included it because you could certainly read it at a younger age so it sort of fits in with the theme of these books that you might sort of pass them along to younger readers um, and we have here Pride and Prejudice which I just think is stunning like absolutely look at that and this as well as all the other books here are illustrated by Hilia Ozdemir who is a Turkish illustrator and honestly like pfft, completely blown away by the work that they have done on these books. We then have The Railway Children by Inez Bit, which certainly falls more into what I would think of as traditional children's literature and they all have again these French flaps with the beautiful prints inside. I don't think I showed you the Pride and Prejudice one but beautiful inside, absolutely stunning and that corresponds to the print that's on the front of the book um, in these instances. So we have Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery, they all have these beautiful spines. I feel like this one is particularly unique because it's the only one um, with like a bright bold red hair colour, they're all otherwise quite dark browns and, and blacks for um, the female protagonists and then we have Anne here with her beautiful red hair and the corresponding print on the inside. We then have Heidi by Joanna Speedy which was one of my favourites when I was a child. I um, absolutely love the design of this as well and I've been meaning to reread it as an adult. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott which looks like this. This is the only one with two women here on the front which kind of makes sense given that uh, it's women, not women in the title there and that's the inside. And um, then lastly, I have to say this might be my favourite one because it's just so beautiful and that's A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett and oh my goodness, is this not 
stunning. Oh, I just love these. These are absolutely beautiful and I don't think I could ever part with these. I love them. I will confess that most of the books you are going to see in this video are from one imprint or another of Penguin Random House. <laughs> Um, they do just constantly bring out beautiful classics and the next one I have is another author in full although I'm missing a couple and that is the John Wyndham collection so this is published by Penguin um, and these are all in matching editions with very like similar um, illustrations by the same illustrator and very similar colour palette. So these covers are illustrated by Brian Cronin and I'm pretty sure you can get most of John Wyndham's uh, published work in these editions. Even some of his like lesser known works that went out of print for quite a long time they added to this collection as they built it up. Um, although some of those aren't quite as good as his more popular books. Like sometimes there's a reason that certain books stay in print and other books don't stay in print but at the same time I'm a big fan of John Wyndham's sci-fi writing so I do want to have read and collected all of his books over time so I do need to add a couple more. This is Plan for Chaos, which for example was unfinished. This was one of John Wyndham's unfinished novels, um, so it's not necessarily quite as impressive as something like The Day of the Triffids, um, but like I said, I am just um, aiming to collect all of his books because I'm a big fan. He wrote sci-fi in the mid 20th century. So this is Plan for Chaos. We then have Day of the Triffids, which is probably my all time favorite book by him and probably one of his most famous works because it is so incredible, so atmospheric. Love this book. We then have Trouble with Lichen. And I just think these illustrations are stunning. These are genuinely the reason I first picked up a John Wyndham book. So I saw these editions in Waterstones back when I was like 19 or 20 and was immediately drawn to them and just thought these are gorgeous and read the backs and thought these sounded really interesting, read more into John Wyndham, discovered these sort of this classic sci-fi author and started picking them up um, to only discover a new favourite author. So this is The Chrysalids. Um, we then have Consider Her Way and Others. So this one's actually a short story collection. Um, I believe I have another short story collection. No, I don't think I do, but there are other short story collections available um, in these editions, so I clearly need to pick them up. We have Chalky by John Wyndham, which is maybe my second favourite. I love, love, love this book. We then have The Secret People, which is this edition here. The Midwitch Cuckoos, which is the first one I ever read by John Wyndham. And Stowaway to Mars. Off the top of my head, I know I'm missing Kraken Wakes. Um, so I do need to pick that up at some point, which is now one of his novels, and there are some short story collections that I'm missing, um, but I'll have to check because when I first started collecting these editions, there was less available than there are now, so um, I always need to like keep an eye out and see what else they've brought out in them, but I think they look beautiful all together. I think that colour palette is stunning. These sort of like muted, but quite bold, like bold but muted colours. Again, a little bit like watercolour -y, so maybe like I have a thing for that, and then these lovely illustrations, so really love that collection. We then have a range which I have a lot less in than some of these other collections, but they're my absolute favourites, and I'm devastated to say that, that I'm pretty sure they're out of print, which are these Shakespeare editions. So I don't think these are still currently being released. Um, you might occasionally see one in a bookshop because it hasn't been sold in the past or pick them up secondhand and that is something I'm constantly on the lookout for so like if I see these in a secondhand bookshop for example I'm pretty sure I picked up Much Ado About Nothing in a secondhand um, bookshop when I saw it because I just think these are beautiful and I would love more of them although they're obviously a collection that I would struggle to collect all of Shakespeare in at this point. And these are published by Penguin again. These are in a mass market paperback um, size and format. So again, this is sort of your standard paperback size, um, whereas this is like a little mass market, which is like slightly shorter and um, slightly less wide. I own in these editions, as you can probably see already, much ado about nothing. The Winter's Tale and Midsummer Night's Dream. I haven't actually read this one yet, um, but need to. And they just have the most beautiful illustrations. Like, I just love these illustrations. I think they're so gorgeous um, and so in fitting. I like the size, the shape, and although they're mass markets, I feel like the print isn't tiny. They're very readable um, and I just I just love them. I wish I owned more and I really do need to like look out for more um, when I, I have the opportunity in the future but for now I'm quite happy with my little three and Shakespeare's something that's very easy to find one edition or another of. I've read a few of them on my Kindle because they're free since they're out in the public domain um, and I'm never not going to have access to Shakespeare so I'm not too worried about that but I do like these editions if I'm going to collect them myself and these are illustrated by Claire Malinsky. A 
Allow me to show you the final penguin collection that I have here, which you've already seen one book of, as I've been using it as a prop, and that is the Penguin English Library editions. So I know that these are massive fan favourites, and this is a selection of books that I have no intention of ever trying to own all of, because Penguin um, offer like a huge range. I don't know the exact number, but it's probably in the hundreds in these editions. This is like one of their largest collections, aside from their like traditional black classics collections, I believe. Um, but they are absolutely stunning, and like I said, I know like a huge fan favourite for good reason. So I would honestly quite happily continue to collect these and own more because of the way they look on my bookshelves and also just the way that they are um, printed and designed. The designer is actually quite a well known designer who's done some of her own like picture books, and that's Coralie Bickford Smith. And in these editions, I own The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells, I own The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte um, and as you got a glimpse there from the spines at the side they all sort of take that traditional element of the penguin sort of classic that little bit of orange but then with a colour um, palette from the front as well so they all have that little orange line and um, but then their own individual colouring as well. Mel Moth the Wanderer by Charles Maturin which has little um, candlesticks here on the front. Dracula by Bram Stoker some sort of plant on the front to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what that is intended to be. The Sign of Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The Hound of the Baskervilles by Arthur Conan Doyle. Sanditon by Jane Austen, which is not available in, in these editions, it's only her like um, six main novels, or of course I would desire to own that too. Um, and then lastly, The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. So those are my Penguin English Library editions. And I'll just give you another little look at the spines because I do feel like that is one of like the main draws to them. Um, they used to um, have this, um, oh, there's a name for this, like matte lamination finish, I believe, on them, but they now come in a more traditional, just sort of like matte finish um, than they used to different opinions on uh, which one was better. I kind of liked myself the matte lamination, but I know others prefer um, these sort of more traditional matte finish. So, you know, each to their own. Um, we then have a collection of books, which I only own two in. So this is my smallest collection, and these are published by Michael O'Mara Books. So this is the edition in which I have Sense and Sensibility. So my um, mum and dad bought me this copy uh, when they were on holiday once and brought it back to me, which is the other reason I don't want to ever part with it, because it was a present, um, and I do want to keep a hold of it, but again, like I said, would still like to own Sense and Sensibility in the other editions. Um, but these are naked hardbacks with um, a slightly, like, well, it's not really floral, this is more like a tree branch design here in the front. It looks a bit like a blossom tree, but obviously with yellow colouring. And the same sort of idea goes in to Jane Eyre, which has the blue colouring. And these are really gorgeous. I love naked hardbacks. Um, and I know there are other books available in these editions. They're not ones I come across very often, but I've certainly seen um, more in this collection. And I'm not sure how big the range is, but I do, I do like these. Um, and I do want to keep a hold of both of them. The spines look like this with the titles of the books on the side. They're in this nice grey colour and they mirror that tree floral blossom pattern on the um, inside um, end papers as well. And these are designed by Anna Bjezanchevic, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and as well as a little ribbon bookmarks which are always a nice added touch. Lastly, we continue with the grey theme and on to some lesser known classics because they are the Persephone book editions. So Persephone are a publishing house that publish almost all of their books in this same design. There are a few in which they have um, coloured design covers, but most of their books are quite well known for this very simple grey aesthetic. And they publish books predominantly by women that have perhaps gone out of print, that are lesser known classics from like the 18, 1900s. And I own four of those books. This is the Hopkins Manuscript by R.C. Sheriff. We also have Tory Heaven or Thunder on the Right by Marganita Lasky. This one actually has a tiny little dust jacket almost, just round part of it. We then have The Blank Wall by Elizabeth Sanksy Holding and No Surrender by Constance Maud, which was um, a novel written by a suffragette. And these books each come with a matching bookmark. And what I mean by matching is because although the 
front covers are very very plain and underneath the dust jackets so they're interesting because they're like paper bags with dust jackets which is quite rare um, but underneath the dust jacket and underneath the cover and um, we have really bold beautiful prints a bit like those vintage classics editions and each one does come with a matching bookmark I'm not sure I have the matching bookmark for each of mine um, but obviously I have that one I may have lost or just like never had the matching bookmarks for some of the other ones I'm pretty sure I do have the matching bookmark for this and I've used it I just don't know where it is um, um, this is the blank wall which looks like this inside and I believe the designs on the inside are all from like um, vintage carpets or like fabric prints they've been sort of converted to this this uh, design inside yes end paper is taken from a late 1940s furnishing fabric manufactured and sold in the United States in a private collection. Ah, so they're all different. So this one, which I just showed you, um, is taken from Mechtil, the block printed linen furnished fabric designed for the Omega workshops in 1913. So they're all taken from like textile designs, um, but from different eras. So for example, this one again, um, I love the inside of this one. Like, look at that, it is so beautiful. Um, and this one was taken um, from Transport, a 1945 dress fabric in printed rayon crepe designed by Felix Topolsky. I just think that's so beautiful. And then lastly, um, oh this one I do have the bookmark for. We have the matching bookmark here um, which matches the inside print which is just stunning. Um, this, god I could imagine a piece of furniture or clothing with that, it would look beautiful. End paper is taken from Wangle 1932, a dyed cotton three colour print. Oh, how stunning. I absolutely love those. Did I have a bookmark to go with this one? I don't think I did, so I don't have a bookmark for this one. Um, as you can tell, I'm probably not like that precious <laughs> about my books, so I would have uh, paid attention to where the bookmarks um, went. But these are just absolutely stunning, and I would certainly like to own more in these editions, um, but obviously I also want to pick up books that I'm interested in from Persephone as opposed to just picking them up willy-nilly. So these are the four in the past I've been drawn to. Um, if you have more recommendations of Persephone classics that you've enjoyed, let me know. I would love to hear about them, but for now I'm quite content with my little four. So those are all of my sort of special edition classics collections that I own. So you've kind of seen, I guess, my complete collection of special edition classics. I didn't include in this video, for example, my Oxford World Classics, or my Penguin Black Classics or my Penguin Modern Classics. Um, if you would like to see those, which are more of the standard classics um, designs and sort of classics editions um, that are probably most widely available from some publishing houses, let me know. I can do a separate video. Although all of my Penguin and Oxford World classics editions of classical literature were in that other video that I mentioned and I'll link it down below. But if you'd like to see, for example, my modern Penguin Classics collection, I would be happy to film that video too, so let me know. But this was fun to just sort of talk about some beautiful books for a little while. I would love to know what your favourite from this video is, but also just like what your favourite classics collection is. Do you collect specific editions of classic literature? Do you gravitate towards one design over another when you're picking out your classics and what are some that you would like to collect, for example? Um, do let me know in the comments down below, but until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone!